I, by way of, of a bit of background and, and uh, to complement what, what Spencer has said, in, in May 2013, CFIA launched the Safe Food for Canadians Action Plan, and, and we characterize this beyond just the Safe Food for Canadians Act, even though that is certainly the keystone um, of, of the action plan. But the action plan itself is indeed com comprised of several complementary initiatives, including the modernization in the inspection system, enhanced science capacity, and the introduction of a capability to more strongly support risk-based oversight. And importantly, at the back end, and, and in Spencer's slides, one of the differences that you might have noted uh, between FISMA and the Safe Food for Canadians Act and Action Plan is the, the strong focus f on how compliance is achieved, and, and so compliance promotion. And that's not to say that our U.S. colleagues aren't, aren't thinking about that. Formalizing it in the context of the action plan, I think, is, is really where the difference is. Uh, the key feature, certainly, though, th is the Safe Food for Canadians Act. And, and this n new piece of legislation, uh, which we expect to come into force at the beginning of 2015, consolidates authorities under four federal acts and, in essence, enables a more horizontal perspective to how we look at the management and oversight uh, uh, of the food regulatory framework in Canada. As Spencer noted, the f existing framework, in essence, um, one would characterize as being more about evolution than necessarily sustained design because it's grown up in a number of different organizations which ultimately were brought together under the CFIA and in a lot of cases uh, have been in place for quite a, a long period of time and as a result aren't necessarily reflective of, of current uh, issue and, and practice and so consolidation also presents the opportunity to really look at the framework from a horizontal perspective as opposed to from a commodity perspective alone. And, and in that regard, uh, there are a couple key areas of highlight and, and Spencer ha has noted some of these uh, licensing and preventative control system requirements. And, and, and those two elements are, are, are important links as we think about uh, how we go forward, and, and I'll expand on that uh, as, as I go through the presentation. Better control on imports, tougher penalties for activities that put health and safety at risk, and the strengthening of those authorities with respect to traceability as, as noted. The passage of the Act was really only the start of, of this process because in order to bring the Act into force, we are engaged in what for us is an unprecedented level of regulatory modernization in order to update the regulatory framework in complement to the Act and, and as a result bring the Act into force. And that in includes a, a, an unprecedented level of stakeholder consultation and outreach as part of that process to develop the new regulations. Ultimately, um, it, it's our aim to improve the protection for Canadian families as it relates to food safety risk. And so, you know, as noted, we, we can debate the strength and effectiveness of systems, but no matter where we sit along that continuum, we believe that, that there is indeed opportunity uh, for enhancement. And uh, importantly, uh, I'll note that the work that, that we're doing in the Canadian Food Inspection Agency with respect to this action plan is complemented by initi initiatives that are our sister agencies, uh, Health Canada and the Public Health Agency, 
our undertaking under the Healthy and Safe Food for Canadians framework, which was announced uh, last November. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in, in, in the context of, of, of some of the drivers for change because Spencer, uh, I think, has characterized these uh, quite effectively. But recognizing that our previous legislation, some of it more than 50 years old, really, as a patchwork, uh, left us with the concern around its effectiveness in dealing with 21st century challenges and the assurance that as a patchwork uh, it effectively covered the territory in the way that we would prefer. And, and the passage of the Safe Food for Canadians Act I think was a reflection that not just from a, a Canadian Food Inspection Agency perspective but indeed from a broad stakeholder perspective, there was support that the framework itself required updating. Important in that context, uh, the recognition that there are many technologies applied in food production and processing today that weren't even envisioned when the legislation that the Safe Food for Canadians Act will replace uh, was first promulgated. Uh, the shifts in terms of consumer expectation and indeed the information side of that equation, uh, the interest and demands on the part of consumers to participate in the process, um, to be able to peek behind the curtain and understand uh, as well are important elements uh, as we contemplate how we modernize uh, the system. And so, as we think about what uh, we've been doing, we've been seeking to balance objectives between enhancements in terms of the food safety system, while at the same time reducing overlap uh, for business, and by creating that single set of rules, we hope to clarify expectations and as a result make compliance easier to achieve. And, and, and I say easier, uh, we, we do have a, a strong focus on the reduction of regulatory burden, but we recognize that there is indeed a cost to compliance and we don't apologize for the importance of compliance but we do want to be considerate of, of the cost of compliance as we go forward. Uh, that's why the process, both in terms of the development of the Act and the Action Plan, and indeed the regulatory framework as, as we go forward, has been highly c consultative because we believe that it is in the interest of all stakeholders ultimately to contribute to shaping the system. Clearly, uh, government has a role in decision making with respect to the federal regulatory framework, but that doesn't mean that government alone has to be the basis of defining that framework. And, and so we've spent a fair amount of effort in reaching out uh, to business, to consumers, to international partners. Uh, we've certainly uh, not been shy about uh, copying some of the elements of what we see in the frameworks of, of, of our international partners that, that we uh, believe can contribute positively to the shaping of the Canadian framework. And in, in that regard, uh, we have been, I think, uh, very blessed with the level of engagement that we've had. Not all of it has uh, been in agreement with, with, with our direction, uh, but that challenge, we believe, is still useful in helping to ensure that what we end up with is practically achievable while still advancing our interest in, in terms of uh, enhancement in the system. So, as we go forward, the issues of how we manage 
in a framework with continued pressure on public resources has been very central uh, in our thinking. And, and so throughout the development process, we've been exploring where greater efficiency in the system can be achieved, greater focus in the system uh, in, in terms of where there's risk. We recognize that uh, one size fits all is not going to be in our collective interest, nor frankly is it necessary uh, in, in order to achieve the objectives uh, in terms of protection. And as a result, uh, a focus on, on risk-based as an approach that becomes more than simply a perception of risk, but a more foundational consideration of risk directing inspection resource is, is a foundational consideration uh, to our modernization. Uh, in terms of impacts on industry, uh, we recognize that with new requirements, uh, they, there are new potential costs. That said, we, we equally believe that by consolidating uh, requirements, it presents the opportunity for greater consistency and, uh, importantly, uh, a level playing field uh, for industry. Fundamentally, in our current context of very commodity-based approaches, it means that, in essence, the same hazard presented in a different vehicle is currently managed differently. And when one looks at that from a risk basis, managing the same hazard in the same way, regardless of the vehicle through which that hazard is presented to the consumer, allows us as an agency to be more consistent in our approach, but as well allows business to be assured uh, of more consistency in uh, the expectation and therefore the cost um, for compliance. The new legislation as well supports enhanced market access because it provides the CFIA with the opportunity to provide the assurance that uh, importing countries are asking for across all food commodities for export. And, and, and that's not the situation today. Um, certain commodities um, have a very clear and strong export certification framework, while in, in the case of others, the existing authorities don't provide for us to provide export certification, even though importing countries have started to demand ex export certification in commodities that previously that was never necessary. And so in order to enable Canadian businesses to access those markets, the system has to adapt to reflect uh, the interests that exist um, in, in terms of the import frameworks uh, of our trading partners. And so this slide at attempts to frame the transformation focus that the agency is undertaking in, in, in a single slide. And in essence, uh, we're focusing on the rules framework and, and, and much of the discussion to date has been in this context because we're elaborating a new regulatory framework. We, we're engaged in consultation with respect to the characterization of that framework. In that context, uh, the, the concept of licensing, uh, as Spencer noted, is, is an element that, that, that's quite new. And, and I want to just pause briefly to, to talk about that a little in terms of why contemplate licensing, including licensing of importers. Well, it goes to a couple key features. One, it goes to that issue of the accountability uh, with respect to food safety. And while we're not 
in a situation where we would describe to Canadians that government doesn't have a role in food safety, because that's certainly not the case, nor is it obviously the intent of, of the framework, it is clear that industry must be accountable for the safety of the products they produce. Government does not produce food except in very specific uh, situations. And so one of the tenets of the frame is to recognize that responsibility of industry for the safety of the products that they produce. In the case of importers, recognizing that production doesn't happen domestically, uh, we want to ensure that the, the party responsible for the products share that responsibility in the chain and can exercise that responsibility back through their supply chain. And so in terms of their interaction with us, we, we hold uh, the importer accountable in, in the context of the safety of the products they import and connected therefore to importer licensing is that concept of the expectation of preventative controls. In essence, know what you're dealing in, understand the areas of potential risks, and be confident that appropriate controls are being exercised in, in order um, to meet that expectation around the assurance of, of, of safety. The same holds uh, in, in terms of licensing in the domestic production context because it, it serves a, as in essence, the contract between the business and government with respect to their recognition of that accountability. The rule set alone, however, is not sufficient. And so our oversight model itself uh, is something that we've been focused on. How we do our work in, in terms of inspection has to adapt uh, to business practices and so better tools and training for, for inspection staff. Importantly, enhancement of, of guidance uh, documents. Our aim as a regulator is not about punishing non-compliance only, but instead to achieve compliance because it is through compliance that that assurance of safety is provided and so we believe that important in our frame is, is, is providing the tools that can assist industry in being compliant. So strengthening our guidance and importantly complementing that with a focus on, on, on the promotion of compliance. And in this regard it goes to one, one of the very significant challenges that Spencer noted and that is the challenge for small uh, and, and, and micro-sized uh, businesses and in, indeed uh, many medium-sized businesses as well uh, in terms of compliance. We recognize that as the rule set changes, as it becomes less prescriptive and more outcome-based, this can actually present a very real challenge to business. Uh, while business often says to us, we need greater flexibility uh, in order to align uh, meeting your requirements with how we design our business practices, which is entirely reasonable, when, when it really gets thorny, they say, tell us exactly what we should do. And, and there's an inherent tension between those two things. And this is particularly challenging uh, for small business where they may lack the capacity or access to the expertise, in essence, to design their system and take advantage of the flexibility that an outcome-based regulation might provide. And so in that context, it is our intent to complement an outcome-based framework with the provision of tools such as, for example, model systems. 
uh, model systems in terms of preventative controls which industry can adopt and adapt to their specific circumstance uh, as a means of aiding our ultimate goal which is to improve food safety through compliance. We also want, want to back in how we manage uh, in terms of the framework by recognizing that the relationship between a regulated party and the regulator can sometimes uh, represent uh, tension, and we don't always get it right. And, and so a statement of rights and services and a complaints and appeals mechanism is being built in to provide two regulated parties the opportunity to ensure that where they aren't confident that we got it right, that there is that opportunity for second thought. And then finally, in the context of, of consumers, um, as I said earlier, in the interest of, of being able to see behind the curtain and participate in the process, a, a focus on, on more information, improved tools uh, in order to foster both greater clarity on actions and, and better understanding of the framework itself as they go forward. And so with that, thank you.